Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulina Muhammadin wa la alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Nahmadu Allah ta'ala wa nasafiru shadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika lah Nashadu anna Sayyidina Muhammadin abduhu wa habibuhu wa rasuluh Sallallahu alihi wa la alihi wa azwajihi Wa sahabi tabi khulafa rashidin mahadin min ba'di Wa zilamati ala tahkik, huzilmi wa alamati khulafa rasul ala tahkik Umar al-Mu'minin, Hazreti Abu Bakr wa Masman Ali Wala bakri sabit tabin, ridu Allah ta'ala alihi majma'in Ya ayuhal mu'minul hazirun Itaqun Allah ta'ala Wa ta'ina Allah hamal ladhin Itaqun ladhin ahum muhsinun Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil amin yamin mursalin Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin Wa la alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in All praises are due to Allah Lord of the universes All praises are due to Allah Who created everything from nothing All praises are due to Allah Who has absolute might and power over everything. All praises are due to Allah who is free from need and exalted above His creation. All praises are due to Allah who is the all-knowing, the all-hearing, the all-seeing. All praises are due to Allah who has gifted mankind with intelligence and faith and with modesty. All praises are due to Allah who sent Sayyidina Muhammad the one with khuluq and azim, a tremendous character, to guide us to the Sirat al Mustaqim. And may all peace and blessings be upon the guiding lamp, the intercessor for mankind, the helper of the Ummat, the beloved of the Lord of the worlds, the Padishah of the universes, Sayyidina Muhammad. May peace and blessings be upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq. Hazrat Umar al-Faruq, Hazrat Usman al-Ghani, and Hazrat Ali al-Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. O oh, believers, what is the foundation of our faith? When a building is built upon a strong foundation, it can withstand the winds and the hurricanes and whatever that hits it. But when a building is built on a weak foundation, even with the smallest shake, the whole building will come down. So what is the foundation of our faith? 21st century Muslims will give very rehearsed answers. My religion is founded upon the five pillars of Islam. My religion is founded upon the principles of Iman. But this is a matter of faith. And when we are talking about our faith, we have to speak with Haq. We have to be real. It is not enough now to repeat the pillars of Islam and the principles of Iman like a parrot without knowing what they mean. The first pillar of Islam is shahadat, bearing witness that there is nothing worthy of worship but Allah and that Sayyidina Muhammad is his servant and messenger. The pillar of our faith is witnessing. But have we witnessed that? Have we witnessed our Lord? And have we witnessed our Prophet? Or are we like the Muezzin, that when he is saying the Shahada during the Azan, a friend of Allah cursed at him and said, You are a liar. You say you have witnessed this, but you have not. So if we have not even entered into the first pillar of Islam properly, how can we claim the pillars of Islam as the foundation of our Iman? So to find the real foundation, we have to look at those, those ones who have unshakable faith. We have to look at those whom we have been told to follow. We have to look at those who have been called the stars in the sky by the Holy Prophet Who are these people? They are the companions, the sahabe kiram the ones who have attained that high station second only to the prophets. The ones that they gave up their lives, their wealth, their comfort, their families for the sake of Islam and who have been granted honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what was their foundation? What was the foundation 
of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, the foundation of their faith. Our Shaykh Sahib al-Sayf, Shaykh Abdul Karim al-Kabrisi Rabbani Qadazullah Sir is saying, Allah kept the Holy Prophet wasalam, amongst us, amongst the Sahabai Kiram for 23 years. For 23 years, they were watching that Prophet. Whatever he was doing, however he was living, and however his actions were, they were copying him. They were applying to their lives. And those people who were once the worst, doing so many crimes, they turn around and by following that Prophet ﷺ, they reach to the highest station that no man ever is going to reach in dunya and in akhirat. It is known that in dunya they have reached to that station. In akhirat, they have reached to that station because most of those people who are following the Holy Prophet, they were slaves. Most of them... They were slaves. In front of the other ones, they had no value. Their value was that they were, other people were buying them and they were being sold. But their name is written everywhere with golden alphabets, everywhere. In Muslim countries and in non-Muslim countries, in every library you go, you find their names. It is written there. No one can take them out. The more the ignorant people are attacking them, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting them in higher stations. The friends of Allah, they speak the truth. So their foundation, the foundation of the Sahabi Kiram, their faith, the foundations of their faith was total obedience and submission and muhabbat to their Prophet. That put them in the highest station. It was not their prayers or the recitation of the Quran or their fasting or their charity. It was their dedication to Sayyidina Muhammad And that dedication made them sultans of dunya and akhirat. Even when the world called them slaves. What title can we give to those ones who want the love of Allah and His Rasul? What value can we give them? Evli Allah are saying, when the righteous ones even if their names are mentioned, mercy that comes down. If we remember them, if we look at them, and we look at what they gave, what gave them value, then inshallah we will learn how to walk on the path of faith that they left for us. Hazrat Zahir ibn Hizam, look at his life, remember him. Hazrat Zahir ibn Hizam, he was a simple, a simple man. He was a Bedouin living in the desert. And the Hadith is mentioning that he was not a handsome person. He used to come to Medina once in a while, but whenever he entered Medina, he would bring a simple gift, like cheese or butter, to give to the Holy Prophet. And because of that simple adab, Holy Prophet ﷺ loved him. Holy Prophet said about him, Zahir is our Bedouin and we are his city people. <coughs> Once Hazrat Zahir came to Medina to sell some items in the bazaar and Holy Prophet saw them. Holy Prophet hugged Zahir from the back and put his blessed hands over Hazrat Zahir's eyes. Hazrat Zahir's he was surprised and he was saying, let me go, who is this? When he turned around and saw the Holy Prophet ﷺ, he immediately ran to hug the Prophet more tightly. And the Prophet then started to say to the people in the bazaar jokingly, who wants to buy this slave from me? And Hazrat Zahir who was rejected by the world for his looks, for his poverty, for his simplicity, he said to the Holy Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, I'm unsellable. Nobody wants to buy me. And Sayyid al-Kainat, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa wasalam, said to him, but with Allah, you are not unsellable. You are precious to Allah. What gave him that title? Simple adab, simple love, sincerity, 
devotion to the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Hazrat Julaibib. Hazrat Julaibib. He was a person in the worst situation in Jahil Arabia. Even his name is showing that he was disabled because it means, Julaibib means the dwarf. Nobody knew where Hazrat Julaibib came from. Nobody knew his mother. Nobody knew his father. And so he lived in that tribal society with no tribe, without any protection. But he loved the Holy Prophet. And in one of the battles, Hazrat Julaibib was from amongst those who went on the battlefield for the sake of Allah and his Prophet. After the battle, everyone was looking to see if their relatives were all right. So the Holy Prophet asked them, have you lost anyone? And some people gave the names of their close relatives. He asked again, have you lost anyone? And again, people gave the names of only their family members. He asked them again. And the people again gave names of the people they had kinship with. And Holy Prophet said, you lost your families, but I lost my Julaibib. Go and look for him in the Maidan. When they found Hazrat Julaibib, they saw that his martyred body, he was cut up. And next to him were the bodies of seven enemies he had finished before he was being martyred. When the Holy Prophet went to see Hazrat Julaibib, he said, he fought seven and then he was martyred. He is mine and I'm his. He is mine and I'm his. He is mine and I'm his. And the Holy Prophet والسلام, lifted his short, small body in his own arms and buried Hazrat Julaibib himself. These are the people who were the strangers, who were rejected by society. But they were not rejected by Allah and his Prophet. The Holy Prophet والسلام, says that he belonged to them and they belong to the Prophet. They did not gain this value from anything other than their obedience and their submission and their simple, simple faith to their Prophet. In front of the Holy Prophet والسلام, it was not lineage or wealth or power that was important. It was taqwa, it was love. That is why, has, that is why it is said, Ibn Lahab, who had the same lineage as the Holy Prophet والسلام, but rejected the Holy Prophet, is called the father of fire, while those who did not even know their lineage belongs to the Holy Prophet, and he belongs to them. This is the beauty of Islam. The value inside the Ummah, inside the community of Islam, inside the Jama'at, it comes from an individual's dedication to the Holy Prophet. Inside the Jama'at of a Shaykh, the value comes from those who are showing the obedience and submission to the Shaykh in the same way that the Sahabi showed obedience and submission to the Holy Prophet Our tariqat, especially our Usman Naqshbandi Jamaat, our Naqshbandi way is concentrating on making the murids follow the path of the Sahabi Kiram. Who is saying this? Hazrat Imam Rabbani Ahmad Faruqi Sir Hindi, our Grand Sheikh, is saying this tariqat is identical to the tariqat of the Sahabi Kiram. So it is then our duty to treat the association of our Shaykh the way that the Sahabis treated the associations of the Holy Prophet. This is the essence of tariqah. And this is what all Shaykhs in the Awliya, they are teaching and they are watching. This is what Mevlana Rumi is saying about, about when he says, I bow to you. 
because the dust of your feet is the crown on my head. As I walk towards you, every step I take is a blessing. This is what Sultan Bahu is talking about when he says, in the divine court, and Adam's weight of love weighs more than all of your faith. Just reading the holy books, worshiping, doing rituals, these are all dry and dead practices. Without a sheikh, you cannot achieve anything. Even if you stand in prayer all night long, only if you die before you die, Ya Bahu, can you reach your destiny. This is what Hazrat Nizamuddin Awliya is talking about when he says, those who are true ashiks give away both of the worlds for the sake of their beloved. And even then, they feel they have not done anything worthy. This is the way of our Shaykh and what he has taught us. And this is the way that we are trying to follow. This is the way that our Shaykh lived his life and passed from this life. This is why he is saying, Inshallah Rahman, we are asking help and support from our Shaykh. And I don't know about you, but I put my neck under his feet. And every blood that is my body is sacrificed to him. I will never ask. I will never ask if he's doing right or wrong. Because I know that he's doing right. And even if it is something that looks that it's not right, definitely I trust and I follow his footsteps. And everything that I'm doing in this country for 35 years, all those who know me know that I'm following his footsteps, even though so many of them don't like me because of that. And I have no fear, and I have no worry. Even he says to me, even if he says to me the worst words in this world, inshallah, I am over 50 years old, and I didn't change my heart to him one time. I'm not intending to change it until the last breath. We are serving Shaykh Maulana Muhammad Nazim al-Haqqani for five generations. My grandfather, my father, me, my son and my grandson, we are serving him. We are going to serve him. Anyone who is saying other than that, either they're attacking me or they're liars and they're in big gaflet. All believers, this is the Osman Le Naqshbandi way. To have that kind of service and that kind of obedience and that kind of submission and muhabbat, love to the living shaykh. This is what we have learned from our Sahibu Sayf. This is the inheritance that he has left us. This is the way we are going to live until our last breath, inshallah. We are asking the help of Allah and our Prophet to keep our promise to our shaykh, the one that they love. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم واتوب اليه لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد كل شيء قدير لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد كل شيء قدير لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد كل شيء لا اله الا انت سبحانك من الظالمين لا اله الا انت سبحانك من الظالمين لا اله الا انت سبحانك من الظالمين سب القدس ربنا رب الملك تبارك سبحان الله 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 سب